Hi guys, my name is Scott. I'm a recently licensed private pilot and a mechanical engineer. And I love blabbing on about aviation to my friends so much that I figured I'd finally bring it onto video. People tell me I'm pretty good at explaining things and there's nothing I love explaining more than aviation. Uh, so I really want to make this series of videos to cover a whole bunch of concepts, most of the science behind flying, but maybe even a little bit of current events and regulations. Um, but I decided that I'd start with ground effect because uh, there's a lot of cool science in this. It's a topic that a lot of people, even a lot of private pilots, don't fully understand. And it opens the way to a whole bunch of other cool topics that I hope to cover in the next subsequent videos. I want to start with a disclaimer that if you are uh, any kind of pilot doing a training program, uh, please don't construe any of this as a uh, as a substitute for your flight training. Uh, you rely on your CFI, the FAR AIM, your pilot's operating handbook, and your own common sense when you're operating an aircraft. Having said that, let's get right into it. So ground effect is best described as an area of increased performance in an aircraft when it's about one wingspan off the ground. So we've got our little model aircraft here. So when when we're flying at one wingspan off the ground here, the pilot's going to get a sense that he's floating almost. It's almost like a, the aircraft is riding on a cushion of air right as it comes in for landing. And this is pretty cool because it allows us to land at, uh, at fairly low power. And when used correctly, it can make a really nice smooth touchdown. Um, the downside to this, though, is that the aircraft is performing well when it's right near the ground. So as soon as it leaves the ground, as you would on takeoff, suddenly the aircraft gets decreased performance. And it's something that pilots need to watch out for because once they're one wingspan off the ground and higher, they might realize that their aircraft is not in fact going to perform as well as they thought for the remainder of the flight. Uh, it's also in its most dangerous, uh, its most dangerous scenario, um, the aircraft might even be overloaded, as in have too much weight that it shouldn't even be able to take off, only to have the pilot find that it will take off in ground effect, but as soon as it leaves ground effect, that airplane sinks back down to the ground. So it's something that's heavily emphasized, especially in short field and soft uh, field takeoffs. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. But um, the main issue I have with how ground effect is explained is that people usually talk about the cushion of air idea and they stop there. And that's a good simple way to think about it when, uh, you know, if you're just flying the plane. But when you want to learn the actual science behind it, it actually really, really oversimplifies things. The nice thing is that the true explanation or the various explanations for it aren't that much more complex than the cushion of air theory. And I think they're a heck of a lot cooler and they definitely tell you a lot more about how the aircraft works as a whole. So, We'll talk about the wing uh, in detail in yet another future video, but for now all you need to know is that four forces act upon an airplane, and those four forces also act upon the wing here. We've got lift and thrust. Lift is what fights weight. It's what keeps us up in the air. We love that. It's what helps us climb. When we have enough lift, we go up high. And thrust is what keeps us moving forward. It's generated by the engine and the propeller to get us going. So that gives us our airspeed generally, and you know, another thing we like. What we don't like is we don't like weight. Weight always fights lift. The airplane has to work harder the more it weighs to stay in the air. And we definitely don't like drag because drag is, uh, opposes thrust. And the more drag we have, the harder the engine has to work essentially to move forward. Um, like any good movie, lift and drag, the one's our friend, one's our enemy, they're basically brothers. Um, down here I have the equation for induced drag. Uh, there's various types of drag, and you can read all about that. But for now, we'll cover induced drag, because that's the drag on the aircraft that's due to lift. In other words, it's completely tied to lift. The more lift you have, the more of this drag you have. And uh, you don't have to have a heavy background in math to really understand this equation. It's just telling you that the amount of lift you're getting on a wing squared divided by pi times the aspect ratio of the wing times a wing efficiency factor is going to give you your drag. So the two big things to take away here is that this is lift squared. So, you know, if this number is 4, everything else down here being 1, you're going to get 16 times drag. It's 
a huge amount of drag proportional to the uh, lift that you're getting. Another thing to take away from here is you've got the aspect ratio of the wing. And that's just like if you've ever looked up an aspect ratio in your TV set or monitor, it's the same exact thing. It's just how much longer the wing is versus the cord to tail, as in like the front to back of the wing. So the higher the aspect ratio, the longer it is compared to how wide it is, uh, is going to, that's going to increase, uh, sorry, it's going to decrease your drag. So we like that. We like a long, long wing with a uh, not too much of a uh, cord to it. Which again, the cord is the distance from the tip of it to the tail. So that brings us to the next part of what really is going on when we're in ground effect. In normal flight, when you're flying an aircraft, you've got high pressure beneath the wing, low pressure above it. Probably heard of that if you've looked up anything about aerodynamics. That's kind of the 101. Um, what they often don't cover in the first uh, day one of aerodynamics um, is that when the high pressure area below and the low pressure area above meet at the end of the wing, you get something called a wingtip vortice. This is another can of worms opened into a whole crazy concept of what goes on there. Uh, if you Google wingtip vortices, you'll find some incredible stuff versus how dangerous they can be when an aircraft is flying behind another aircraft uh, to all the crazy theories about how they really do affect lift. But to stay simple today, what you need to know is that the vortices during normal flight are almost like perfect circles. Uh, they generate around the wing like this on the right side of the wing, and on the left side of the wing they generate like this. Um, when you're in ground effect, and also want to add that these vortices are caused by drag. This is basically one of the biggest forms of induced drag you can get. These vortices really detract from smooth airflow over the wing at the edge. As a matter of fact, there's such a factor in flight that if you've ever been on a commercial flight, or the next time you go on one, check out the ends of the wings. You'll see these little vertical posts on the ends. They're called winglets. And they're not just there to look smart. They're actually there to spoil or to break the vortice that's happening. Now, so in normal flight, we've got them as perfect circles. In ground effect, they get squished a little bit. Because they're interacting with the ground, they get flattened. And what's really interesting is that the more or less the center of these vortices is uh, more, you can consider that the end of the wing. It's your effective wingspan. So as you're flying down low to the ground and these vortices get elongated here and here, the effective wingspan is increased. It's kind of longer than your actual wing. So you're kind of getting like a bonus wing on the left and right. And what that does is that counts toward our aspect ratio. And that, through this equation, gives you reduced induced drag. Um, on top of that, throughout the wing, this is kind of going on. You've got little vortices going on, getting smaller and smaller as you get to the center of the aircraft. And when they pull off the back as you go through, uh, you get something called downwash. And downwash is the amount of drag that's kind of forced backwards and downwards. So that's really opposing lift and thrust. Even though I've drawn them here as up, down, left, right, they're not always like that. In various stages of flight, lift, thrust, drag, and weight can be at different angles on the wing. So drag really hurts you because it might act in a direction that hurts lift and hurts thrust. So it's a real killer. Um, when you reduce drag, when you reduce uh, down, down wash, what you're doing is you're changing the vector that the overall vector that's happening on the wing. If you've done any kind of vectors in school, you know, you know, you go like up, you go right, you add the tip to tail, and you get your resultant, and that's what's happening here. So as we reduce the downwash, as this red arrow here representing drag gets smaller and smaller, this triangle is going to get thinner and thinner, and you know what happens, this resultant gets more closer to the direction of lift. So that's great, because what that's doing is, not only is it removing our drag, but it's removing our drag in a way that's turning lift actually in a more upwards direction, more in the direction we want the aircraft to go. So really, this kind of induced drag effect is helping you out in all sorts of ways when you're in ground effect. You're, you're getting the air clean. Basically, what's happening in the uh, long scheme of things is that, say I'm flying and I'm coming in for a landing, 
if I want to get the same amount of lift at that would normally be a two degree angle of attack, in other words, pitching the aircraft, say, two degrees up, I only have to get one degree. I only have to pitch the aircraft up one degree to get the same amount of lift that it would normally need if it were at two degrees out of ground effect. So that helps in all sorts of ways. It makes for a really nice smooth landing. Throughout the whole runway, you need to use less engine power to get the same amount of oomph out of your plane. So that's pretty much the whole topic. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Let me know what you thought of it. Let me know if I left anything out that you think. And definitely uh, suggest any future videos that you might want to see. I'd love to do these. I'd sure love to do a lot more. And I hope I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.